channel. We are here to talk about the winter solstice. I've got a whole ritual for you. I'm really excited. I fucking love the winter solstice. It is my favorite holiday. Like it's my favorite and I am hype and I'm excited to share it with you. So let's just get into it. So the winter solstice is the longest night and more importantly, it marks the point at which every day gets a little bit more sunlight. So every day after the winter solstice up until the summer solstice, each day is a little bit longer and each night is a little bit shorter. It's the return of the light. Um, traditionally, Yule logs were lit all night long to bring the light in during the darkest night. There's all kinds of traditions that go back, but it's important to observe and understand and be in alignment with the cosmological constants and bring that into your awareness and into your life in order to be in your best, highest alignment. At least that's how I live my life. So the importance and the significance of the winter solstice is it's the return of the light. We begin to see the light back into our lives. We shine light on our shadows. Um, it's also one of the reasons why, in my opinion, the winter is the best season for shadow work, which we're going to get into very soon. Um, because it's when you're kind of in the dark month still, but you're getting the light. The light is seeding in so you can start to see and it starts to make sense. And it's just, it's, it's a beautiful time of the year. It's fucking cold here and that sucks. Um, but seasonally, I love it. It is also the new year. If you operate off of a cosmological calendar instead of the Gregorian calendar, which is the January, February, March, blah, 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 blah system that we operate off of, that calendar is garbage. It's just garbage. It's, it's garbage. And I, it makes me so crazy. Like I would love, I would love to be able to just switch us all over to like a lunar calendar where there's 13 moons in a year and your moons are 28 days apart. And you have the winter solstice, the summer solstice, the equinoxes. It's it's constant system. It works. There's no reason we should have 31 days in one month and 28 days in another, and then a leap year ever so many. And if you think about the actual months themselves, the word December actually comes from the Latin word decem, which means 10. It's supposed to be the 10th month, which it was when the year started in March. Also October, October, octagon, octopus, eight, should be the eighth month, not the 10th month. It makes no sense. The whole system is shit. But if you operate off of the cosmological calendar, then the year starts and ends on the winter solstice. This is the real new year. Fuck January 1st. <laughs> December 21st is New Year's Eve. Like that's what's up. December 22nd is the new year. And I, that's why it's my favorite holiday. Like every year I just, we start over. <laughs> like, we start over, we take what we've learned and we move forward. And it's amazing. This is, in my opinion, the most important ritual I do ever because it is setting down the groundwork for the entire next year. I put in extra effort and extra energy on the solstice my phone will be off. <laughs> I will be uncontactable and I will be working all of my energy and resources into this ritual because that's how important I feel it is. Now that I've done with my tangent on what the solstice is, I'm going to move into the ritual specifics. So that's enough of my tangent about what the solstice itself is. It's the return of the light. It's the darkest night. It's the new year. It's my favorite. So let's get into the information on the ritual itself. The final and last little disclaimer I want to say before we jump into actual ritual footage is I'm gonna do a fair amount of steps. I'm gonna use a fair amount of supplies. You don't have to use all of those. At the end of the day, to do this, this ritual that I created, you could get away with a piece of paper, a pen, a little white tea light, um, and some cinnamon out of your kitchen. You could boil it all the way down to that easily. Now, I'm gonna use a lot more than that. I'm gonna go over a bunch of extra steps. You don't have to do those things. And here's the real point I wanna dr drill home. The most common message that I get is somebody who is concerned that they can't replicate one of my rituals 
because they don't have this, this or that, or they can't do this, this or that. Um, moon water, for instance, I can't put it outside. Uh, can I put it in the window? Yes, it's fine. Do that. Um, so I can't, I don't have this. I can't do that. I can't dig a hole. I can't, whatever the thing is. Right. And here's the important part. All you need is you. You could essentially do a whole ritual by just sitting down and meditating and doing your intention. That's fine too. The problem comes when you start to doubt yourself, when you disempower yourself because you don't feel like you have the adequate supplies or you don't feel like you have the adequate experience or whatever the thing is. You do. You have everything you need. Don't doubt your own power. Don't doubt your own essence. You can do this ritual even if you don't have all the things. You don't have to. Okay, you don't have to, you're still good. There are a lot of people, most I would comfortably say, most people are gonna do no things for this ritual. Most people are not gonna celebrate the solstice. If you sat down and wrote an intention on a piece of paper, you're leaps and bounds ahead of that. Like you're doing great. I am gonna do a lot of steps because I really pour a lot of energy into the solstice. You don't have to do this. Anything you can do is great. And as I go through this ritual, I'm going to tell you alternatives and I'm going to tell you like, don't worry about this, don't worry about that, blah, blah, blah. blah. I'm going to list um, associations and supplies and like get this or get that or whatever. You don't have to. And I'll explain to you as we go what's optional and minimums and that kind of thing. So don't get overwhelmed. Don't worry about it. Anything you do is great and you can do it and you're good. <laughs> okay, so don't worry about it. That's my number one disclaimer. I want to drive home. You have the power. You can do it. Don't even worry about it. Okay. Now let's get into it. So this next bit is totally optional. If you choose to do this, it will be used in the ritual. And then you can continue to use this throughout all of 2021. If you choose not to, I'll include a timestamp for you to just skip it. Um, but what we're going to do here is make a sigil. What I like to do every year is boil down one major intention for the following 12 month cycle down into a singular word if you have to go down to a small phrase that's fine uh, i always preach like do whatever feels right to you there's no hard and fast rules here but uh, I, I like simplicity so down to a singular word i think is ideal and then we're going to turn that word into a sigil which you can then use all of next year, as well as in the ritual itself. So if you don't want to do this, you don't have to, feel free to skip it. Um, if you want to learn how to make a sigil, this is the easiest way that I know of. There are other ways and methodologies to do it. Feel free to research that if you want to, if you get, want to get really into sigil making, knock yourself out. Sigil magic is super cool. I like it. If you want to get into it, research your heart out. I'm going to show you a quick, easy way to make sigils right now. So essentially what you do is you take your word or phrase, and you remove all the vowels until you just have consonants left. And then you build those consonants into a shape, which is your sigil. I'm going to show you a couple as an example um, and a couple ways to do it. There's like a circular method and there's like a more sticky rune-like method. Um, so we're going to start with my 2020 word, which was elevate. So you have elevate, E-L-E-V-A-T-E. -E. If you remove all the vowels, all you're left with is L V. And T. I will also say, I have no fucking idea why you're supposed to remove the vowels, and I don't sometimes because, again, I don't believe there are any hard and fast rules. So I have left the vowels in if it, like with this word, I did because I only had three letters to work with and I wanted more lines in mine. So there's kind of the rune sticky method, um, which for this instance would just be like, uh, I could do my T, my V, and then count this as my L, and then that's it. I have a, it looks like a shitty pot leaf, basically, is what I've essentially drawn. Or you could, what I did is I've included the vowels before. Again, I have no fucking idea why they say to remove them. I think it's just for simplicity's sake, but with this case, there's only a few left, so I included them. So you could, what I did for this one was, it looked like this. And that was that was all of my E's. So there's one E, there's two E, there's three E's. And then my A was here. And then my T, L, and then V. 
And that's what my Elevate Sigil actually ended up looking like. The other way you can do it, that's like a runey stick method. The other way you can do it, which is cool, is with circles. So you have a circle, right? And then you just draw your letters inside of it in a way that's whatever, free flow. I wonder if it feels good to you. So you could do straight letters or cursive letters. You could draw straight lines inside or curves or whatever you wanted to do. So for this one, I could just do, I'm winging it here for the record. This is my big fat cursive L. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna put a, this is my T, straight line. And then I'll do a V here, there. There's a rune for elevate with just three letters. It's a cursive L, a T, and a V. That could be your, your sigil. I said rune, didn't I? Whatever. That could be your sigil. It's whatever you want to do. And you can get wild with it. If you wanted to use, um, let's say you wanted to use love and you left all the vowels in because otherwise you only have two letters. You could... I mean, it doesn't have to be cursive either. You could just literally make your L a straight line if you wanted to. And then an O. And then a V. And then there are no rules. You could do a lowercase E if you're feeling real spunky. There, there's love in it. Really shitty looking. That's, I'm not proud of that one. That's not cool. Um, I like Christabelle's, so, L, O, V, and then let's say E, this is your E, there's a love sigil, so whatever you want to do, you can get really creative with it, what I recommend this particular step is figure out, really spend some time to figure out your intention for the next 12 months, boil it down to the simplest version that you can, and then get creative. And if you have to do a phrase, you could say, I don't know, I can't think of anything. I, although when I, the only thing I have on my mind right now is the one that I'm using for 2021, but that's private. I don't want to reveal it. So I can't think of anything else. Let's say, um, uh, maybe you're really gung-ho on your weight loss, which I definitely am this year. It's not my sigil. Probably should be, but it's not. We could literally make weight loss. It doesn't have to be that spiritual or whatever. It could be very practical if you want. Um, if you want to be a better parent, you could literally write better <laughs> mom. And then you could take out your vowels, W, G, H, T, L, S, S, or B, T, T, R, M, M. And then you could turn those into circles. You don't have to do them in circles either. Like I said, you can also do these kind of sticky versions, which I do regularly. I like the kind of hard edge right angles of them. I would say this is mostly what I do. These ones are more fun to make though. <laughs> it doesn't have to be woo woo or spiritual or anything. You can make whatever your intention is. Whatever one major goal you have for the entire year, just write it down, put it in words, make it into a shape. But I would recommend doing this for the sake of having created something that then can represent your intention and use it all year long. And I'll show you later on in the ritual where you can use this on multiple occasions and, and, and throughout the year, slap it on fucking everything and just let that intention permeate into your consciousness constantly. So this is totally optional. You don't have to do this part. Uh, we're gonna move on to the next step. All right, the actual first step to the ritual is gonna be just to cleanse your space. Um, Palo Santo, sage, um, um, crack a window, burn whatever you wanna burn. <laughs> sage, Palo Santo, incense, whatever. 
I recommend also putting on some meditation music. And um, uh, if, if, optional, totally optional, if you are a cannabis user, uh, I personally like to smoke um, at the beginning of my rituals because it's an all or it's a consciousness altering substance. Therefore, it alters my state of consciousness. Therefore, it shifts my mindset, which puts me in the mode of the ritual. And because I do it with my rituals regularly, it's it's almost like a trigger. Like, all right, I've got candles and I've got <laughs> weed. It's ritual time. Like, it shifts my mindset into that mindset. I would also highly recommend taking a shower uh, or like, or a bath, but preferably a shower and just kind of do a visualization in the shower of like you want to visualize kind of the water washing away any kind of heaviness or any negativity then you're holding on to that's not serving you that kind of thing so cleanse your space smoke if you want to and then hop in the shower cleanse yourself and then you're ready for the next step this is one of those steps where you could go all out or you could stay simple what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna grind up with my mortar and pestle i can never say it correctly i don't feel like if i'm saying it wrong let me know um my mortar and pestle i'm gonna grind up my herbs into here with intent you don't have to use all these things you don't have to do this if you have this if you have one sweet you have no need for one then that's fine don't get one if you don't have all this you don't want to grind whatever that's fine just grab some bay leaves or some cinnamon i will put in the description box all the associated herbs with the solstice choose one or two or three or whatever the fuck you want from that list okay we're gonna end up rolling these herbs into a piece of paper and burning it so we don't even need a lot we just need a little bit the reason i'm choosing to do it this way is because i'm going to physically transform these one two three four five individual herbs into a new mixture where they've been grinded and physically combined together and while i am grinding them i'm also going to do a visualization um, of my intention into the herbs and i will do that by um the way that i do it I, I typically work with my heart. There's different ways you can do it. Anything that works for you is fine. Uh, I typically work with my heart. So I will work up the positive emotions and feelings in my heart. I'll visualize it as green and or white. And then once I can physically feel it, like it becomes physically present, almost like there's a pressure growing in my chest, I'll move it down and out. And then I'll move it into my hand where I'll be grinding. And you don't need a lot either, like, at all. Here's some cannabis flour, like a couple. Um, here's some mistletoe. Um, one more disclaimer as well. Some of these herbs are um, unsafe to consume. Uh, they can be unsafe for children or dogs. Um, some herbs are safer than others. Do your own research, please. I am not responsible for your lack of research. So just, just whatever herb you're going to use, Google that word and then the word safety. Um, also, pro tip, if you're going to use bay leaves, you can actually write uh, words of intentions. Or like if you want, if you, if you decided to do the sigil thing, you could put your word on here or that you use for your sigil on the bay leaf itself and then again we'll just visualize and we'll grind everything together that's it i now have the powder that is made from several different herbs our herbs if you're choosing to do this are now ready the next step is to gather all of our supplies and set up our altar space. So let's head over there. What we wanna do is leverage uh, a lot of correspondence. So first, primarily color. Um, you'll notice I have a green altar cloth. This is literally a one yard piece of fabric <laughs> I had cut at Joann's. For the solstice, I'd recommend white. 
gold, green, or red. Um, it's also the color of the candles I have here. Now, I have four candles. You do not need four candles. <laughs> you can use however the fuck many candles you want. I like four. I like symmetry. I like... I've got like a line of crystals and candles and it's like a square. I'm just a symmetry person. So the first thing you want to do is set up your space however you want. If you're new to my channel and that sounds unstructured to you, welcome. I believe that ritual work is a form of personal expression and creativity and that you should do whatever you feel like doing, whatever you feel like doing it. So set up your space, whatever feels good. Okay. Feel, yeah, empower yourself. And then step one, incense. Um, on the solstice, I will burn frankincense and myrrh resin. Probably have a frankincense uh, stick resin or stick incense as well. Today, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to burn copal because I prefer the smell of copal over, oh, don't hurt myself, over frankincense or myrrh. Now, the ritual itself is really actually quite simple. We want to leverage as many associations as possible, right? So we have color, got my altar cloth, I have my candles. This is about the only real necessity for this whole ritual. Candles are the real necessity. Remember, the solstice is about bringing in the light, right? So we need light <laughs> and we want to use fire for that. That's about the one necessity you have here. Additionally, I have some stones. I have a quartz and an emerald, three garnets, and a bloodstone. I will list in the description box all the associated um, stones for the solstice. If you have them, use them. If you want to buy them, cool. If you don't, it's fine. Again, what you want to do is cool. Um, I also have my ground up herbs. Again, if you just want to use some cinnamon or bay leaves from your kitchen, totally fine. I have a dish of water. If you are somebody who makes moon water, this is an excellent time to use it. And then I have a piece of paper and a marker, which is green. And I would recommend a marker or a pen that is either green or red or gold if you've got fancy ones. That's fine too. Again, we want to stick with as many associations as possible to leverage the collective consciousness. Remember? So the ritual itself. Quite simple. Here's what you're gonna do. Set your space up, start your incense burning. You can have your meditation music in the background, etc., etc. And then you're going to sit in the dark. Now, a note on that, make sure you know where your lighter is <laughs> or matches. Because what you're gonna do is you're going to, while you're in the dark, have to flick your lighter. So make sure you can find it. I mean, you don't have to be in pitch darkness. You can, and that's cool, but you don't have to. Um, you're gonna sit in the dark, you're gonna close your eyes, and you're gonna visualize and feel all the things you want to leave behind. When it comes to magic, manifestation, visualization work, the real power is in emotions. Emotions carry so much fucking energy, it's bananas. So, Visualize all the things you want to leave behind. And if you can feel it, feel the weight of it, feel the pain of it, the things that did, just ugh, that, feel it. And then visualize that garbage in whatever way works for you, drifting off into the darkness. And just let it go. Let it drift into the night, the long night. Let, let it fall away into the previous year. You don't have to take that with you anymore. We're leaving it behind. Once you've done that to the point that you feel is adequate, you are then going to see in your mind's eye a flame emerge. Now, as you see that flame emerge, I want you to see it as the return of the light and no and visualize what is bringing forth to you in the coming year. As the light returns, what is the light bringing you? What are you working towards? See it and feel it again. 
feeling is really the key. I want you to try to work up as much love and hope and peace in your heart as you can and see the light, the flame in your mind's eye giving life to that. And then once you kind of have it, you've got a, you've got a, a significant amount of that feeling and energy worked up, go ahead and, with your eyes closed still, flick your lighter, okay? And so you can see the light already beginning to invade the darkness, even with your eyes closed. And then you open your eyes, and hey, it's the light. It's the return of the light. And then you're gonna light all of your candles, however many that is. You've got one, you've got one. You've got four, you've got four. You've got 20, go crazy. Whatever you wanna do is cool. Light your whole room with candles if you want to. You're bringing the light, bring as much as you want, doesn't matter. Use one, use two, use a hundred. Whatever you wanna do. Light your candles. And know with each one that you light, that you are multiplying the visible light in your space. And as such, you are bringing light into the darkness and giving birth to this new cycle. It also just occurred to me that there's one other thing I failed to mention that's actually pretty important. Um, when you get ready to make up your altar space or on the day of the solstice, I would recommend um, going outside and gathering pine cones or pine needles or um, if you're uh, maybe in the Southwest, you can go with sage or anything that's associated with uh, the solstice that you could actually go and get yourself even sticks when I actually do my ritual that's why I didn't think about it when I do my ritual I'll have those things I will do that earlier in the day I will go out during the daytime and I will get them and I'll bring them back with me I don't have them right now because the solstice hasn't happened yet so I didn't think about it but when you set up your space um, go outside and gather whatever the fuck you want and it can be whatever you want I have a friend in California who really prefers to do everything by the ocean and with the ocean. For her, she might just get fucking seashells. So whatever the fuck you want to do is fine. But go gather something to bring in. Bring nature in with you and set that on your altar. It's important to really know and feel and understand the connection between what you're doing and the cosmological uh, correspondence it's not I mean there is again for the hundredth time there's no wrong but it's really immensely helpful if you align your will with the natural cycle so while you're doing this keep in the back of your mind that this is what's happening we are at the longest night we are now moving forward the light is returning that's what we're doing here it's a new year it's a new cycle it's a new time okay light all your candles and then paper and your pen this is where your sigil will come in if you chose to make a sigil put it on your paper if you did not make a sigil put whatever the fuck you want on that paper it's you want to put on the paper what you what you want to bring in, what you want the light to give birth to in this next cycle. You're gonna write it on your paper, and then you're gonna take your herby herbs, you're gonna sprinkle it on there, and you're kind of gonna like roll a joint. <laughs> kind of. Not really, but you wanna fold your paper up in a way that holds the herbs in, fold it up. I would say error on the long side. Uh, because you're going to set it on fire. Write your sigil or your intention or whatever you want to do. Put your herbs in it, fold it up, and then use the flames that you've already lit to set the end of it on fire. Let it burn. As it burns, know that it is birthing with the power of light your intentions in this new cycle. This is also why you have water. <laughs> Please don't burn your house down or burn yourself. Fire is dangerous. I shouldn't state that, but just for the record, you know, be careful. Once you got your intentions done and burnt and it gets to your fingertips and you have to let it go, <laughs> you put it in your water, just sit for a little bit. Just sit with your fire. 
sit with your light and just continue to feel it as much as you can. And not just for you, this is an excellent time to put forth intention into the collective, right? This is a huge cosmic shift. We don't just have the solstice, we also have the great conjunction. And I'm not even, I know that I didn't go over that at all, and I'm sure there are people who are gonna be disappointed in that fact, but it just would have ended up being a 20 minute more video. And to be perfectly honest, I don't, I'm not an astrologer, I don't fully understand it. I do know that it's super fucking significant. Um, and it's just a massive, massive year. Astrologically, cosmically, it has been a massive year, all year. And this is the culmination of all of those things. It's really important that you not just see the light for yourself, but you see the light for the collective. Wish and hope and pray for love and light and peace and harmony for all of us, because we are all in this together. And this is a powerful day for us to come together to do this. You can either sit and wait for your candles to burn all the way out, which depending on what kind of candles you get, might be quick and might not. That's up to you. Play it however you want. Um, otherwise, you can blow them out whenever you feel that you've put in adequate amount of work. Or you could let them burn all night. Um, sometimes what I'll do is, uh, when I'm doing candle work, um, is I may close the circle and finish the ritual, but I will leave the candles burning. Like I might call it good, close it out energetically, but I, I, I want to let the candles burn away out. So sometimes I'll just kind of leave them up and I'll just kind of be around living my life, letting them burn all the way out. So you can do that as well. Obviously take fire safety into account um, or blow them out. You can end this however you want. I will, however, say it's super encouraged and important to give gratitude at the end of your ritual for the blessings you have received and the blessings that you will receive. And then once you've done that, feel free to end the circle however you feel. All right, one more optional step. Optional, totally optional. Um, personally, I decided a few years ago that I wanted to start ending my journals at the end of the year, whether they were filled or not. And then I wanted to start new journals at the beginning of each year. I like cycles. I like looking at chapters of my life and I like breaking it down into these lessons. It really helps me with my growth. So because the winter solstice is the new year, that's a perfect day to start a new journal and a perfect way to start your new journal. But I use these. I use these black hardcover, they're just sketchbooks. Like they have no lines in them, just blank sketchbook paper. What I would recommend is that at the end of your ritual, when you're all said and done, get your brand new journal out, open it up, and right inside your cover, put your, if you decided to make a sigil or you decided on a word or a phrase for the year, put that right here. Um, put, I always um, label the year on the side of my notebooks. Um, I put stickers on them pretty regularly, decorate it, whatever. Start your new notebook out, and then on your first page, write out your intention for the year. Like write out how you envision the future to go. Write it in present tense. Um, you can write it as the end of 2021. Like the year is over and I did this, this, and then I've, grown in this way or you can just write down my plans moving forward for the year 2021 are however you want to do it whatever is comfortable for you I would really recommend or or actually you could just write down the ritual itself like you can just write down the ritual that you did what you did what you envisioned going away what you envisioned coming into the light write down the ritual or write down your intention or write down something but do something during the solstice after your ritual if you want totally optional if you want to start a new journal each year like I do, which I recommend, I think it's fucking awesome, then the perfect time to start it is the solstice. After you finish your ritual, the last and final step is to start your brand new journal. If you do this ritual, I would love 
for you to, if you post it, I know that not everyone's gonna post it. I get that this is one of those things you're not really public about. But if you decide to post it, tag me. Um, you can find my Instagram at Stormy Atlantis. Um, you could do hashtag. Um, I would love to see anybody who replicates or does this ritual. Like, I really would love that. Like, I would love to see somebody else doing it. Like, I'm so excited about this ritual. I'm, I feel really good about it. I'm excited for what I designed. I'm excited to do it myself. I'm excited. I'm just excited. So if you decide to do this ritual, I would love, 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 love to see it. Additionally, there's more information in the description box if you want to follow me elsewhere or find links to stuff, etc. And if you enjoyed my content, please, please, please hit the like button. If you're feeling extra saucy, subscribe. Um, follow me elsewhere. You know the drill. And that's, uh, that's that. So happy winter solstice, guys. Happy New Year. I'm really excited to see what the next year brings for all of us. Bye.